For me, the criteria being in a jury of a competition, um, whether it is the Chopin competition or any other competition, is interpretation. W what I'm interested in hearing a pianist when I go to a concert or when I sit in a jury, it is if the, the player has something that it is uh, truly his own to say. And um, when I say truly his own, I don't mean that it is capricious, I don't mean that it is... But I'm interested in hearing his voice. I don't think a juror can be objective. No, <laughs> unfortunately not, because we are all human beings and um, we have all, I would say we have all work a lifelong period of time in music. So we tend to have ideas that are very defined about the about a piece of music, maybe too much, you know? We tend to have a, a construction in our, <laughs> in our minds of how we would like to hear a certain piece. And this is the danger. What I was, and I come back to what I was saying before. I'm not there for that. I'm there to judge of the value of an interpretation that can be completely strange to me. But this is not the point. You know, so I try to understand what the player is trying to express. This is for me the key thing in my work. But of course, I'm a human being as well, and I'm not always at 10 a.m. in the morning or at whichever time of the day. I'm not on the same disposition to receive the message of someone else. So that's the challenge, and that's uh, the. Um, the thing that, uh, that worries me about being in a jury. Because I, I want, of course, like every of my colleagues, I want to make justice to every performer. Um, very often, more often than not, I think that I'm playing, but I'm listening and judging. <laughs> So, but I, um, when I say I, um, that uh, I figure myself that I'm playing, is because um, I want to be able to understand them. That's the key thing. To have been a participant at the Chopin competition in 1995 and to be now a jury, yes, perhaps it can influence my, my duty in the jury in the sense that, uh, you know, I have had this experience that I didn't get it into the final. But at the same time, I know that the world doesn't end by that. Uh, I have had the chance I, and I consider myself to be extremely lucky that um, I had a lot of support that I highly value at the time that I didn't go into the final. And uh, I have um, encountered some friends here in this country that have remained one of among my best friends for life. And um, I have also um, how I would say, into words, because this is, means a lot to me. Um, I have, I feel, a peculiar link to Polish audiences. And this was all generated during the 1995 competition. So um, it will influence um, my sitting in the jury in the sense that I know that it is not the end but rather the beginning of something. Uh, for me, the, the essence is, uh, I would say, the, um, the roots of classicism that he loved because of the composers he admired most, you know, Bach and Mozart. 
So there is um, in his music um, a great influence of the classic masters together with great passion, great lyricism, um, great generosity. And there is always in his music, I find um, a deep feeling of regret, of nostalgia. Yes. When I approach a piece of Chopin, um, as uh, with every great composer, uh, I start by trying to have pleasure to, with what I do, you know. If, however imperfect this first lecture of the piece could be. You know, much later I start working into detail. But first I try to grab the piece as a whole in all its complexity. So I try to, um, to work from all sides at once, but rather for the general line at first, not so much in detail. Because uh, I have always been afraid, but that's a personal thing, that if you start immediately looking so carefully at detail, then your interpretation may sound cautious or may sound, you know, a little bit too much on the intellectual side. And what I like in a performer is also the unexpected side of things, you know, things that don't go as you planned. But you must have a plan in your head, otherwise you are an amateur, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like when I'm sitting in the public, listening to a musician, I like someone who is daring, who dares to say things that maybe we don't want to hear even. <laughs> yes. I believe that uh, my experience with period instruments was crucial in the sense that I, I got to understand some things differently. And uh, it has def definitely enlarged my, my vision of Chopin's music. And I'm talking uh, specifically about Chopin because I have much less experience in period instruments playing other composers than with Chopin. And also I had that incredible luck to, of working with someone like Franz Bruchen. Um, I think that he's a musician that I really miss. I really miss in my life because I, I believe that I have learned a lot from him. From, he, from his way of looking at the music, from his utmost sincerity towards the music, his humility towards the music. Yeah, he was a true musician and a man of high value. So I had this enormous chance of working with him we had a concert tour in Holland, uh, playing many times Chopin Concerto Number no. Two, for example, and there, there were also so many times in Warsaw, in which we were working, preparing the recording, for example, of the shorter pieces for piano and orchestra, and all that meant really a lot to me. His music is of, um, of, of a great contemporary value. I think that it has not, and it cannot have any connection that limits the music to his time. He's a child of his time, but he's a child of today also. As with every great musician, you know, mm, 
I have noticed that, you know, when you can link some music to a certain period of time, then the, um, it tends to lose its universal value. And uh, Chopin is so, so contemporary for that. It says to, so much to us today, as he said in his lifetime, and it will continue to, to do so. And I'm sure that if we were to live for 300 years, we, we would see also so many different approaches coming from the next generations on how to play his music that we would be astonished because the music will continue, you know, his, its path and will continue to speak to people differently than it does for ourselves in, in 2015. Who knows how it will be?